Hello listeners and welcome to yet another episode of the Nigeria Football Weekly Podcast with me, your host, Olu OK. Today is episode 49 and it's been yet another eventful week in the world of football in Europe, especially involving our Nigerian footballers. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Um, so starting as usual with the Premier League and our Leicester City boys, um, Ademola Lukman recently announced last week that he is his allegiance switch to Nigeria has been confirmed by FIFA. So Ademola Lukman is now officially known as a Nigerian footballer in the eyes of FIFA and he'll be eligible to play for Nigeria in our game against Ghana in the World Cup qualifiers next month. So Lukman and Didi and Yana Cho, um, both of the, all three of them were involved in Leicester's last game before the weekend, which was against Liverpool on Thursday. So they lost 2-0 to Liverpool away, 2-0 with Diego Jota scoring both goals. And Didi and Lukman started the game while Ian Acho came off the bench. Um, and then on Sunday um, afternoon, they drew 2-2 against West Ham United at home on Sunday. So um, Bowen scored yet again for West Ham. Um, and Ricardo Pereira was on the score sheet um, for Les City. Unfortunately for Leicester, they conceded yet another last-minute equaliser, this time from a corner kick um, with um, Craig Dawson scoring the equaliser for West Ham. Indeed, he started this game. Lukman came off the bench and Yana Cho was on a new sub. Um, so a bit concerning for Yana Cho. Um, Leicester are now 11th in the league, so still not going great for them. Um, and they also got knocked out of the Europa League top two positions last year. So that means that they're now playing in the Conference League um, knockout stages this week. So on Thursday, they go to Denmark to play Randers and then they play Wolves away on Sunday. Sorry, the game against Randers is at home at the King Power first and then they go away next week. So Randers at home and then Wolves away on Sunday. Moving on to Brentford and Frank Uyeka's team. Um, he started on Wednesday night um, as they lost 2-0 to Manchester City um, away. No... No, there's nothing wrong in losing to Man City. I mean, they're, they're the best team in the country by far. Um, Riyad Mahrez scored in that game a penalty and then Kevin De Bruyne wrapped up the victory. And then, oh, for some reason, he was on a new sub over the weekend um, as they drew 0-0 at home to Crystal Palace. I'm not sure why Oyeka keeps getting put in and out of the team, but when I look at how Brentford have been performing, I think Oyeka should be starting all their games. No offence, but I'm not the manager. Anyway, it doesn't get any easier for Brentford. Next up, they play against the mighty Arsenal. They come to the Emirates Stadium on Saturday. Um, so we'll see if Oyeka could get back into the starting lineup. Although, of course, I hope Arsenal win the game comfortably. Moving on to Alex Wobi at Everton. Um, last week, Tuesday, he was a new sub as they lost 3-1 to Newcastle United away. Um, however, on Saturday... It will be did play 90 minutes for Everton. And it must be said, it was pretty impressive as they thrashed Leeds United 3-0 at home um, on Saturday. So shout out, it will be very good performance and hopefully could keep his place in the starting lineup as they go away to Southampton on Saturday um, in the league. And then finally, the Watford boys. At the moment, Oli Dennis is playing games. I'm not sure what's wrong with Ekong. He's not been part of Watford's last two squads. I don't know if he's injured or if he's just fallen out of favour with Roy Hodgson. Atebo is still on his way from injury. And I don't think Kalu is necessarily liked by Roy Hodgson either. So we'll see what's happening there. Anyway, Watford had back-to-back -back losses. So they're firmly in the relegation zone. I mean, it seems like the curse of not allowing Dennis to come to AFCON has been following them because they haven't won a single game since then. And it's just been bad result after bad result for Watford. I mean, karma's a bitch. What can I say? Um, they lost 1-0 to West Ham United away on Tuesday. Um, Bowen scored the goal in that game. And then on Saturday, they lost their home to Brighton 2-0. Um, Emmanuel Dennis did hit the post in this game, to be fair. Um, so that was a bit of an unlucky one for them in that game. Next up for them, they go to Villa Park on Saturday to play Aston Villa. I wouldn't bet on Watford getting any points in this game, to be honest with you. Especially when you think about the form of Coutinho and Jacob Ramsey over the last few games for Aston Villa. So that's it in terms of our Premier League contingent at the moment. How did the other fixtures in the Premier League go? Remember, there was a double, there was a game, there was Premier League football during the midweek last week. Um, and then there was also Premier League football over the weekend. So from the midweek last week, which was game week 24, we saw West Ham beat Watford, as I already mentioned. Bowen scored the goal there. Newcastle beat Everton. Um, Kieran Trippier scored a free kick in that game, so shout out to him. 
Burnley drew with Manchester United. So Man United have now drawn back-to-back -back games. Jay Rodriguez scored and Paul Pogba scored on his first start uh, from injury. Um, Norwich drew 1-1 with Crystal Palace on Wednesday. Wilfred Zaha scored a great goal before missing the penalty with was probably the worst penalty taken this season. Um, we saw Tottenham lose at home to Southampton in what was a fantastic result for Arsenal. So Ben Narek got an own goal and probably one of my favourite strikers in the Premier League right now. Armando Brugia scored a goal for Southampton. Son then made the game 2-1 before Elianusi and Che Adams scored for Southampton to seal the points Southampton. Southampton have been excellent over the last week to be fair to them. Um, Villa leads that ended 3 3. That was a cracker. Coutinho scored one. Jacob Ramsey scored a double. Daniel James also had a double in that game for Leeds United. And Diego Lorente tied the game up in the second half from a corner kick. On Thursday, I saw my Arsenal beat Wolverhampton 1 0 away, courtesy of uh, Gabriel Goal. Even though um, the referee Michael Oliver tried to sell the game to Wolves by unnecessarily giving Gabriel Martinelli two yellows. And then, of course, Jota scored a brace against Leicester, as I mentioned above. When we look at the weekend fixtures, we saw Southampton pretty much outplay Manchester United um, at Old Trafford in the early lunchtime kickoff on Saturday. Che Adams scored an absolutely wonderful goal um, after Rashford had set up Jada Sancho to score his first league goal at Old Trafford. Everton beat Leeds United 3-0, as we mentioned. Seamus Coleman scored a goal. Michael Keane scored a goal from a corner kick. And Richarlison pretty much scored the third goal, even though it was credited to Eric Aaron Gordon because it came off his knee, which was a bit unfortunate. Brighton's two goals in their 2-0 win um, over Watford were scored by Neil Mopé. Mopé's goal was incredible, to be fair to him. He's one of those weird strikers that scores screamers but misses sitters. So that, that's just the new Mopé conundrum. And then Adam Webster made sure of the three points um, in the last 10 minutes of the game. And then Man City, the machine just keeps rolling. They beat Norwich 4-0 away. Ryan Sterling scored a hat-trick and Phil Foden um, scored the other goal for Man City. And then on Sunday, we saw Fabinho score the winner for Liverpool in a 1-0 win at Burnley. Very, very tough fixture for them um, in that game, to be fair. Trippier then scored yet another free kick against Aston Villa as they won 1-0. Although, unfortunately, he's now injured, um, at least for a few weeks. And then we saw Wolverhampton go to Tottenham Stadium and beat them 2-0. Curtis of Raul Jimenez and Leandro Dendonca. So Tottenham lost back-to-back -back home games, which is just amazing news, to be honest. Um, but that's it in terms of the Prem. What do we have to look forward to in terms of the next game week for the Premier League? There is one more rescheduled fixture to take place on um, Tuesday night. Manchester United play Brighton at home. I captain Ronaldo in my FPL and he's just not doing it. I can't wait to sell him. But anyway, once that game's out of the way, um, we've got the next game week starting this Saturday. West Ham United play Newcastle in the early kickoff. Um, Arsenal will be playing Brentford, as I mentioned with Franco Yeka. We also see the Watford boys play Aston Villa at one of the 3pm kickoffs. Brighton play Burnley in a 3pm kickoff. Crystal Palace play Chelsea in a 3pm kickoff. Liverpool play Norwich in a 3 p.m. kickoff and Southampton play Everton in a 3 p.m. kickoff. And then in the 5.30 game on Saturday, we'll see Manchester, United, Manchester City host Tottenham. So hopefully we can see Tottenham lose yet another game. And then on Sunday, there's just um, two fixtures for us. Uh, we've got Leeds United playing Manchester United at home. That's a tough, tough game for Man United, to be fair. Um, and then Wolverhampton host Leicester City in the 4.30pm kickoff. There's also a few more rescheduled fixtures in the Prem, which will be taking place next week, Wednesday. So Burnley play Tottenham, Watford play Crystal Palace at home, Liverpool play Leeds United at home on Wednesday, 23rd of Feb, and then Arsenal play Wolverhampton again on Thursday, 24th of February. And that's it in terms of the Premier League action. I mean, it's definitely ramping up in terms of the places. Man City continue to set the pace. Liverpool are clearly second at the moment. And you could say there's a bit of a battle for third and fourth because if Arsenal win our game in, games in hand, we'll just be two points off Chelsea. So I don't want to get too excited, but it's looking good, guys. Anyway, moving on to Serie A. Victor Simez, Napoli drew 1-1 at home against Inter Milan, um, which meant they missed their chance to go top of the league. Osime did win the penalty for Napoli, which Lorenzo Osimhen converted um, before um, Edin Dzeko equalised in the second half with the great finish. So this means that Napoli remained third in the league, two points off the top, one point off Inter in second place. Next up for them in terms of games they play, 
They will be in action on Thursday in the Europa League knockout rounds. They are away at the Camp Nou. So Barcelona versus Napoli, what a tie. Imagine if Osime could just do the business at the legendary Camp Nou. And then in the league on Syria, in Syria, they play next week, Monday. Today's Monday, I'm recording this on Valentine's Day. And they play next week, Monday, um, away to Cagliari. Moving on to Ola Inos Torino. He was an unused sub um, over the weekend as they lost 2-1 to Venezia at home. Um, so a bit of a disappointing result, but they remain 10th in the league. Next up for them, though, they've got the tasty Turin derby. So they go away to Juventus um, on Friday night. So that should be a very, very good time. Hopefully we'll see Olaina get back into the team. Um, speaking of Venezia, Charlie Bui was suspended for the game when they beat Torino 2-1. And David Okereke got a last-minute red card, literally the final play of the game. Um, but luckily for Venezia, they still came away with the win. Um, they're still hovering in the relegation zone, but they've done their chances a lot of good from getting that win. And next up for them, they play Genoa at home on Sunday. So that's pretty much a six-pointer, a relegation six-pointer. As his successes, Udinese got absolutely thrashed 4-0 away on Sunday by Verona. Um, he did start the game, which is positive, so it's good to see that, at least from a fitness perspective, it looks like a lot of his troubles are behind him. Next up for them, though, they play Maurizio Sarri's Lazio at home um, on Sunday, so it doesn't get any easier for them, but hey, we wish them all the best. Uh, in Syria, I just have to bear with us. All our players play for teams that are between 10th and 20th, apart from Victor Sima. And then finally, oh, actually, apart from Kings D, Michael's Bologna, they're also in, he's injured, but they're ninth in the league. Um, and then finally, Salernitana with Simino Arco and Joel Obi. They drew 1-1 to Genoa away on Sunday, um, and it's looking pretty deep for them in terms of being able to starve off relegation. Next up for them, they play AC Milan at home on Saturday, so let's see how they could get on in that fixture. And then moving on to La Liga, Samuel Chukweze started for Villarreal as they drew 0-0 against Real Madrid on Saturday. This means that they're now 7th in La Liga. However, they are just three points off Barcelona in fourth spot. So fair play to Villarreal. They've been able to claw their way back in the league. And they look like they'll be one of the contenders for the um, for the Champions League spots um, going into this season. So shout out to them. They also remain in the Champions League anyway. Um, but they play the following week. Next up for them though in La Liga, they play Granada away on Saturday. So hopefully they can put some points on the board. And then moving on to Barcelona women's, as is that Oshola scored a brace on Wednesday um, in Barcelona's 9-1 win away to Real Sociedad. And then she scored yet another goal in their 3-0 win over Atletico Bilbao away on Sunday. This means that FC Barcelona Femini have won 22 out of 22 games in La Liga. And as that, Oshuala continues to be the top scorer in La Liga with 19 goals, despite her, her injury. Next up for the women's, though, it's the international break. Um, so I'll be touching on what's going on with Nigeria later on in the episode. Um, but shout out to Super Z. And then Bundesliga-wise, Taiwa Wani's Union Berlin lost yet again. Second back-to-back -back losses now. They lost 3-0 to Borussia Dortmund at home on Sunday. Um, they're now 7th in the league, even though they were just 4th about 10 days ago. Next up for them, they play Armenia Bielefeld away on Saturday. So hopefully we can see Awoni and the team regain some of the form that's put them in 4th place in the first position. And then Kevin Akbogma's Hoffenheim, they're currently 5th, so they're also challenging for those Champions League spots. He wasn't a new sub over the weekend, though, as they beat Armenia Bielefeld 2-0 at home on Sunday. Next up for them, they play Wolfsburg away on Saturday. So hopefully we can see how Pogoma gets minutes in that game. And Dixon Abiyama's Greater Foot won their third game of the season. They beat her at the Berlin 2-1 at home. He wasn't a new sub in this game, um, but at least they've kind of given themselves a bit of fighting chance to stay in the league. They are still nine points off safety, so it's more than likely that they'll get relegated. Um, but good to see them at least win a game. Next up for them, though, they have literally a David versus Goliath tie as they go away to the Alliance Arena to play Bayern Munich away. Um, so that's on Sunday, and you might as well just say that's an automatic L for Greta Furt. And then finally, in terms of the top five leagues in League A, we saw Moses Simon score a brilliant free kick over the weekend um, to help Nantes to a 1-0 win over Rheem um, in League 1. Um, they're now ninth in the league. And then pr prior to that, on Thursday, um, they won in the French Cup quarterfinal 2-0 at home to Bastia. So things look to be going really, really well for the League 1 club. 
However, they've got the biggest test you could have in league on next. They play Paris Saint-Germain at home on Saturday. However, we do know PSG are playing in the Champions League tomorrow against Real Madrid. So maybe that could work in Nantes' favour somehow. And then finally, Teramofi and Innocent Bonquet's Lorient. Um, they both started in the last game on Sunday as um, Lorient got a credible 0-0 draw away to AS Monaco, uh, which has now moved them out of the relegation zone in League 1. Uh, um, they're only out of the relegation zone by goal difference, though. Um, but still, positive. They've got four points from their last two games, which is much better than they've been doing from the start of the year. So, shout out to them. Next up for them, they play Montpellier at home on Sunday uh, at 2 p.m. And hopefully, we can see Murphy get back in term, into scoring some goals. So, moving on to the non-top five leagues in Europe, starting with the Premier League as usual. Zedou Sanusi was involved uh, 90 minutes for Porto in their game on Friday against Sporting Lisbon. This was a cracker. Um, they came down from 2-0 down to draw the game 2-2. And there were five red cards in this game, including four red cards at the final whistle. Of course, Pepe was one of the players to go a red card too. Um, however, positively, Porto do maintain their six-point lead at the top of the league. And we know that in, Port in Portugal, a six-point lead is almost as good as done. So... I think Porto are on track to win the league for sure. Next up for them, though, they play in the Europa League as well. So they play Lazio at home on Thursday, um, which should be a very, very good tie. And then they play Morense away on Sunday. Moving on to the Dutch Eredivisie, and we saw Marika Alkoi, Supergo's number one, keep a clean sheet on Sunday. Big, big clean sheet for Sparta Rotterdam. Um, they beat Willem 2 1 0 uh, in the game. This was a big relegation six pointer because. Willem 2 were literally 9 points ahead of them already. I mean, 7 points ahead of Sparta Rotterdam. So Sparta Rotterdam have been able to close that gap to 4 points. And Willem 2 are currently the team that's out of relegation. So if they had lost or drawn that game against Willem 2, they would have been in big, big soup. So shout out to Madaka and hopefully he could continue to grow his confidence ahead of his move to Watford in the summer. Next up for Sparta, they play Fortuna Sidad away on Friday night. And Cyril Dezas, who plays for Feyenoord, he came off the bench yet again in their 2-0 win over Walwick uh, on Sunday. Uh, next up for them, they play Cambo, um at home on Sunday. That's another one of the promoted sides. Um, but I don't think he'll start any games anytime soon. It seems like they really confined him to this bench role. Um, anyway, in the Belgian league, we saw Alassane Yusuf's Royal Antwerp maintain their spot in second place. They beat RFC Sarang 1-0 on Friday night with a last-minute goal. Um, so they continue to be second. However, there's quite a sizable gap between them and Union saint jola in first place. Next up for them, though, they play Mechelen at home on Sunday. And Polonois choose Genk. On Wednesday night, they lost 2-1 to Louvain in the league away. Um, however, on Sunday, they made amends and beat Standard Liège 2-0 at home with Polonoachu scoring the second goal of the season. And that was his 15th goal of the season in all competitions for Genk. So shout out to Big Paul. Looks like he's back in form and hopefully he'll be fit to be caught up for our games against Ghana in March. Um, they also play Mechelen at home on Wednesday first before Alassane Yusuf's Royal Antwerp play them on Sunday. And then Genk will be playing Anderlecht away on Sunday. So that's going to be a tough, tough tie because um, obviously Anderlecht are coached by Vincent Company. Moving on to the Scottish Premiership. We saw Leon Balogu, Jaribo and Calvin Bassi all start on Wednesday night as they beat Hibs 2-0 at home in the league. Um, and then on Saturday, all three of them got rested in the Scottish FA Cup as Rangers cruised to a 3-0 win away to Annan Athletic. Next up for them, those tasty, tasty fixture away to Borussia Dortmund in the Europa League on Thursday. And then they played Dundee United away on Sunday night. Moving on to the Turkish league, Anthony Narkeme's Trabzon Sport continued to lead the league. Um, he initially got rested as they beat Denis Lispor 2-1 away on Wednesday night in the Turkish Cup. And then on Sunday, they played second place Konya Spur and beat them 2-1 at home, which meant that they are now 12 points clear in the league. Narkeme did get an assist in this game as well, so shout out to him. Next up for his club, they play Chidozi Awazim's Alanya Spur away on Sunday. Um, and speaking of Chidozi Awazim's Alanya Spur, they're currently fourth in the Turkish league at the moment. Chidozi Awazim did start in their Turkish Cup game on Thursday, which they won 4 2 in penalties after a 1 1 draw against Adana Demis Spur, where Balotelli plays his football. However, he was in a new sub in their league game against Kashin Pasa on Sunday, 
which ended up 2-2. Um, so we'll see if he's able to get some minutes in that game against Traps on Sport at home on Sunday. And then moving on to Brighton side, Samo for Fenerbahce. He started both of their games. Um, they initially lost 1-0 at home to Kasseri Spur in the Turkish Cup on Tuesday. However, on Saturday, they beat Gires and Spur 2-1 away and they remain in sixth place in the league. So that's not good enough for a team of Fenerbahce stature at all. And it'll be interesting to see what happens to their manager at the end of the season. Anyway, they're in action in the Europa Conference League um, knockout stages. They play Slavia Prague at home on Thursday. So we'll see how they get on in that one. And then they play Hataya Spur at home on Sunday in the league. And then finally, Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa. He was in action on Tuesday um, in the Turkish Cup. He scored a goal as Fatih Karagumruk beat Konya Spur 5-4 in a thriller. Um, and then he came on as a substitute in the weekend during their league fixture as they lost 3-0 to Antalya Spur. Uh, on Sunday. Next up for them, they play Sivaspor at home on Sunday, um, where Larry Kayade plays his football at the moment. And then just to round up the podcast with the last few leagues, in Greece, we saw Henry Yekuru start for Olympiakos in the Greek Cup quarterfinal last week Wednesday. They beat Panatolikos 3 1. Um, and then he was a sub, uh, he came off the bench as a sub as they won 1 0 at home against Ike Athens on Sunday in the league. Um, so they're clearly top of the Greek league at the moment. They'll also be act in action in Europe. So they play in the Europa League um, round of 32. They play away to Atalanta on Thursday. That's going to be a tough, tough fixture for them, to be fair. And then back in the Greek league on Sunday, they play a team called Volos. Um, so good luck to Yekuru. Hopefully we can see him get some sizable minutes in either of those games. Um, in Czech Republic, we saw Peter Olajka start in the Czech Cup on Wednesday night as they lost... 2-0 to their bitter rival Sparta Prague. However, in the league, they made amends and won 1-0 against Slovakko away on Sunday, with Peter Lajka starting both of these games. They'll be in action against Fenerbahce in the Europa Conference League on Thursday, and then in the league, they'll be playing a team called Bohemians 1905 on Sunday. So good luck to Peter Lajka in those ones. Um, and finally, the Cypriot League has been on a bit of a break. Um, so there were no games for our players in um, uh, Omonia and Nicosia, including Francis Zoho. Um, next up for them, though, this Wednesday, they play away to Aris Limassol. So we'll see if any of them get um, a run, gets a run in any of those games. And when I say any of them, I mean Abdullah Shehu or Francis Zoho or Iyai, yeah, I believe, at Um Star boy for the week, I mean, it has to be Moses Simon. Moses Simon, we know that he's now in the consciousness of all Nigerians after his exploits at AFCON. And it's good to see him take that form back into his club side. We know he's one of their most important players, one of their talisman, one of the most prolific assist creators in league on this season. But it's nice to see him chipping with goals here and there. I think that's his third or fourth league goal of the season. Um, also, European football is back, as I've already mentioned with some of these fixtures. So I thought I'd just give you a rundown of the Champions League fixtures to come this week. Um, so Sports in Lisbon play Manchester City at home tomorrow on Tuesday. While the big tie of the round, PSG versus Real Madrid, also takes place at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Um, on Wednesday night, we've got Inter Milan versus Liverpool in what looks like a very, very tasty tie. So, um, currently second in Prem versus second in Serie A. Red Bull Salzburg are also at home against Bayern Munich. You would have thought that would be a routine win for Bayern, but we just saw Bayern Munich lose 4-2 away to um, book them in the Bundesliga this weekend. So it's a bit too hard to call. Um, the following week, we're going to get the other round of 16 fixtures with Villarreal playing Juventus on Tuesday, the 22nd of February. And Chelsea were probably one of the easiest ties of the round are at home against Lille FC of France. On Wednesday, the 23rd of Feb, we see Atletico Madrid go at it against Manchester United in what's going to be a very, very tasty tie. You know, the whole Ronaldo, Atletico Madrid link. Both teams kind of faltering in their league at the moment, so you can't really tell who's going to do what. And then in what's probably one of the ties for the purists, Benfica playing Ajax. I think that's going to be a lovely fixture. Um, but with the way Ajax are playing in both the league and the group stage of the Champions League, you have to make them slight favourites for this game or the tie in general. And in the Europa League, as I already mentioned, Barcelona play Napoli, um, Dortmund play Rangers. Those are the games involving our Super Eagles players. Atalanta play Olympiacos um, and FC Porto play Lazio. Um, so those four games all include our Super Eagles um, players in some form. 
Um, and then the other fix, just look out for Zenit St. Petersburg play Real Betis at home. Sheriff Tiraspol, who did really, really well in Champions League. You remember them against Real Madrid. They're at home against SC Braga. Sevilla, Europa League Kings, they're back. Playing against Dynamo Zagreb at home. Um, and then RB Leipzig play Real Sociedad at home. Um, so those are the fixtures in terms of um, European nights. Um, final news from Nigerian football. The Nigerian Super Falcons are in action this week. Um, so it's the final qualifier rounds to make the AFCON as well as the World Cup. Nigeria play Ivory Coast in a two-leg tie. The first game is at home on Friday against the Ivory Coast. Um, and then next week, Wednesday, we'll be playing away to um, the Ivory Coast. So um, I'll let you know how the game goes um, in next week's episode of the podcast. Um, I would wish Azat Oshola and the rest of the team all the best. In terms of the ones to watch for this week, we've got European football, so we have to start with that. Victor Sime going to New Camp. Can he do some more amazing work and, you know, just make history? He loves the big nights. So we wish all the best in that game. Our Rangers contingent, Jaribo Balogu and um, Calvin Bassi in action against Dortmund at the Signal in Duna Park on Thursday. That should be a great game as well and good for their um, reputations. Zedu Sanos East Porto against Lazio on Thursday as well. And then we see Brasai Samo um, Svenebache play against Slavia Prague in the Euro UEFA Conference League. Also, we'll see if Henry Ekuru plays against Atalanta on Thursday in the um, Europa League. And then in terms of league games to look out for, Friday you've got the Turin Derby. Yes, you could argue Juventus always favourites against Torino, but it's always a big... Um, well contested derby so we'd we'll like to see a lot I know play on Friday um, we got Franco Ekas Brentford playing against my Arsenal on Saturday Moses Simon is in action against PSG on Saturday so hopefully he could do some more damage against the league leaders we got Kelechi Anacho and Didi and Lukman playing against Wolverhampton on Sunday um, you could say Leicester in desperate need of a win in the Prem to be fair um, and then we've got our league um, boys Moses Simon and Insen Bonke for Lorient in action against Montpellier at home with a good chance to stay further clear of the relegation zone. And then finally, we've got the game between Chile Zerwazim and Anthony Noakeme with Alanya Spur taking on Trabzon Sport on Sunday. Um, and that's it for this episode of the podcast. Thanks again for rocking with me. Please remember to subscribe on any of the podcasting platforms you use or on YouTube if that's your preference. Remember to follow us on our social media channels at NFWPOD on Twitter. On Instagram, it's at Niger Football Weekly. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash Nigeria Weekly and YouTube channel is Nigeria Weekly as usual. I've been your host. Thanks again for listening um, to this episode of the podcast and enjoy all the football that's to come during the week. Peace out. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe and click the bell to get a notification whenever we drop a video. You can also find our social media channels listed below. And of course, up Super Eagles and Nigerano de Eva Carry Last.